Well, I am joined by this bike. It is Mirko Ilitsa of Trek Factory Racing, his team issue, Damani. Now, as you can see, there is a slight difference to this bike to most other pro bikes at the moment. And that is that it is not using rim brakes, it's using disc brakes. So Mirko is one of the few riders here at the Vuelta Espana who is trialing disc brakes for his team. So let's start off with the fairly standard pieces of equipment. So right at the top here, uh, Bontrager features throughout really, that's a company which is owned by Trek. So at the top here he's got a Montrose Pro carbon railed saddle. Now one of the big features of this frame is the ISO speed decoupling here. So if you have a look, the seat post actually goes all the way up through here. There's an elastomer just here and it continues all the way up right to around here somewhere. And this part of the seat post actually goes over the top of the seat tube. So it's slightly different to others. And if you look at me here in another clip, it does actually offer quite a lot of flex and comfort as the riders are heading along. Now it's got a full Dura-Ace group set. The brakes of course are different, but we've got the slightly different and adapted STI levers here at the front for the DI2. He's running an 11 to 28 speed cassette here at the back and then the standard 3953 chain rings on his Dura Ace cranks here at the front and he's actually using 172.5 millimeter cranks. If you have a look at the wheels, at the moment they've got the Bontrager Alias 5 wheels in which are fairly deep section. That could well change for the mountains which are still to come in this year's welter. And mounted onto them are tubular tyres. They are provided by Veloflex. 24 millimetres is what I've measured them at. They actually haven't got it marked on them exactly what size they are. Now, if we take a closer look at these disc brakes, because that's what you're all waiting to see. They are Shimano's newest model and they've got ice technology. So one of the concerns amongst riders and teams with disc brakes was that they would warm up a lot, particularly down descents. And if there was a crash and somebody did happen to fall onto one of the discs, they might potentially get branded. So Shimano have come up with this ice technology. And if you look at these specific parts of the discs, down here. This is designed to make the heat dissipate so that it don't quite get as warm as perhaps an ordinary disc brake might. Another feature which we see on most treks these days are, is this duo trap feature here on the chainstay. Now that does two things. It's got a sensor, so if there's a magnet on the cranks it'll measure cadence and also on the inside there's a speed sensor. So if you put a magnet on the spokes it does that as well. Now if you come up here towards the flight deck, as Matt Stevens would call it, I've measured the bars, they're 42 centimetres from centre to centre and he's another pro who chooses to use aluminium rather than carbon bars. Stem itself, that's Bondrega as well, 13 centimetre stem with a negative 17 degree angle so you can get nice and low at the front. And as you can see, like a lot of pros, it's pretty much completely slammed on top of the head tube here. One of the other things of note on this bike is the fact that the rear brake is internally cabled. They've managed to run those hydraulic cables through the frame and coming out through the chainstay. However, on the front, that is not the case. So as you can see, this cable runs down here and is effectively zip tied to the fork. And in this day and age, on a top end bike, that is reasonably crude, essentially. But I'm sure that Trek are working on a way to get the hydraulic cable inside the fork so it just looks a whole lot neater even if it might be a little bit harder for the mechanics to service. Now I've taken some measurements so if you want to know what seat height it is our ride it's a 77 centimeter measured to around about here where he'll be sitting most of the time and the moment of truth how much does it weigh? Is there a weight penalty for disc brakes? Let's find out. Well, there you have your answer, just over 7.6 kilograms. So I think there is indeed a slight weight penalty at the moment for using discs on a road bike, but I'm sure that will improve in the very near future. Anyway, if you'd like to see a more detailed insight into various other pro bikes in the Peloton, we've got loads for you. You can find them in a playlist by clicking just up there. And if you'd like to see if these discs do in fact stop you quicker out on the open road, we also did a detailed insight into that, myself and Si, and you can find that video by clicking just down there. And if you would like to subscribe to DCN, it's absolutely free. And yes, you've guessed it, all you've got to do for that is click on the disc. It's just there. It does look nice, doesn't it? But you might disagree. Leave your comments below.